Hey everyone, it's Monday 30th of March and it's 5 to 1 in the afternoon. So, uh, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> well, I'm at the desk so I suppose I should show you the new little gadget I've bought. Little uh, multi-function bicycle lamp. So it's got... Uh, I might have to take that lens off again. Um, it's got brake light, tail light, your turn signals and a horn on this control. Now, the horn is very loud so I'm just going to give you a blast on that. So, as I said, it's loud so if you've got headphones on, turn the volume down and take them off. Yeah, I've got it on the siren one at the minute but there is multiple tones on this. Like I said, it's loud. So if I'll just sit that there like that. This was $9.99 on eBay. There it is. That's what my total was. Oh, and uh, where's the there's the seller in case you're interested to have a look. So here it is. Here's the brake light switch which you would fix to your cable. You thread the cable through that and if you set it up right when you pull on the brake cable, your brake light will come on. It lights up three LEDs when your tail light is off. If I turn the tail light on, the middle LED lights up, which uh, is not actually that bad to be honest. Not brilliant, but not bad. And when you hit the brake with the tail light on, the um, outer two LEDs light up. Uh, you can use the indicators with the tail light on. Sounds like they're barking, doesn't it? With that particular horn tone on. So yeah, that's all the functions. It's not bad quality, but it's not the best. It's definitely one of the better ones I've purchased. That might be why that's not screwing down properly. I'll have to take that off and just sort that seal out. So yeah, looks like we've got plenty of cable came with the brackets but it came with no instructions. It did come with a box which was on the floor but no instructions in it. But this actually reminds me of like a moped tail light. That's what that reminds me of. This is big or a motorbike tail. An old 1980s motorbike tail light. That's what that reminds me of. Anywho, I'm gonna uh, oops, put this off to one side had something several years ago similar that worked almost as well as this that had different tones on there and whatnot as well um, but this <laughs> unit actually broke on my, my old one blah, 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 blah. anywho onwards to the kitchen I've been in quite a, a computer mood lately a desktop mood not a laptop mood so in the kitchen at the minute a clean up as you can see. I've got this Dell Optiplex 380 on the worktop, which has got a Windows 7 CO um, sticker on it. I think it's even got a COA on it. Yep, Windows 7 Pro. So, I haven't decided yet. Someone's put Windows 10 on this, but it's password protected. Now, I was given the password with this computer when I got it but it was written down and that is long gone now so I'm tempted if I'm honest to put Windows 7 back on it um, so it's back to originality almost apart from a couple of upgrades here this riser card section I took out of my Optiplex 740 which is older than this machine but the cases are exactly the same it's just like Dell kept the power supply and the case and just changed the motherboard. <laughs> but the risers and everything's the same. All they've changed on the motherboard that I can see is where my 740 has a USB 2 header on there, which allows me to put the uh, um, card reader on. Because that one's got the card reader 
fitted. This one's got a third SATA connector there. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to put another hard drive in here. Might be able to fit two. Then again, there is no power supply. So I'm really not actually understanding the point of this SATA connector there. Oh well, anyway. I went and pinched the uh, riser adapter out of the other case. And uh, I've mounted this ASUS GT710 1GB GD GDDR3 video card and a wireless adapter. Just because. I have got a different video card that I could have put in here but it's far too big it won't fit. Um, and it's literally only just won't fit. The fins actually sit on top of this. So, not to worry. See if I can just get that to line up. It's in. We'll fold that handle down until it's ready to go. Already know that the card works on this machine. Um, it's only got two gigs of RAM at present because, and it is DDR3 RAM, but that is because I don't have a matching one to go with this one. It can take four gigabytes max um, with a clock speed of 1066, I believe it is. Uh, and that's the max speed this can handle. But uh, I've only got that one. I've got a bunch of server RAM up there, which I don't think is going to be a lot of use. Let's just put the antenna on the Wi-Fi card. Like so. There. I've got several of those antenna spare that I've taken from broken cards and whatnot. So, Windows 10 or Windows 7? Windows 10, Windows 7. I'm really not sure what I want to do with this one. I might have to flip a coin or something. Right. I was going to chuck that lid, but I need it to rinse the uh, jar out. Trying to find Branston Pickle at the minute, it's like trying to find gold. Uh, I'll turn that light off for a minute. I'll turn my overhead spots off. I'm going to put an inline switch on here somewhere because it's pissing me off having to keep unplugging it. Just so I can leave that plug in on the end and just... I've got some inline switches spare somewhere. Let's see if I can find them. Right. Bedroom. So. Motherboards. I've got them all out of my cupboard up there because it was a bit of a mess up there. And to be honest, I'm not 100% certain if all of these still work. So, I thought if I get really bored later, if I get really bored, I can um, go through and test them. There's one that I can't test, which is that one, but I'm reliably informed it does work. Um, so I actually got that from my friend that I got that video card from. I just showed you on that Optiplex 380. Um... I just don't have a processor to fit this one. And I don't think I've got a heatsink to fit that one either. But yeah, that one I'm reliably informed does work. This one, I can't remember what machine I took this one out of. <laughs> so I can't remember if it works or not. Um, but as far as I know, the last time I tried all these motherboards, they did work. But I have found, like this one, that just by leaving them stacked in a cupboard, they can sometimes just randomly die. Because this one, if I remember rightly, last time I tried doing something with this, it wasn't working. Um, and I can't even find anything on this particular board online either. It's a QDI. But I like it because it's got so many upgrade options on there. You know, if you really want to build a Windows XP, for example, with as many upgrades as possible, just for shits and giggles. You've got one, two, three, four, five PCI slots there, AGP. Yeah, that doesn't want to work. <laughs> or it didn't last time. Um, I don't need to test that one because I know that's that's got what I like to call sometimes 
sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't <laughs> probably a bit like this one because that's not the only time I've had issues with this either and they've both got some timers um, and then I've got four boards here that actually look rather rough because they've got rusty IO you see it's got icky IO on that one got some really bad rusty IO on that one and that one and one up this end. That's because these four I bought in a job lot of shit, basically. <laughs> just to put it bluntly. Um, most people would have just thrown them in the bin, but I did get a working video card from it. I just think I've got a couple from it. And a few other salvageable parts. But it seemed, going by the Christmas decorations stuck to these motherboards, that someone used a bunch of motherboards as like a computer themed Christmas decoration and probably outside looking at the rust on these IOs um, but weirdly these four that I kept do work or well, again they did last time I tried them um, and trust me if you saw the condition of these I think I did a video on these when I first got them they were in a bad state um, I think a lot of people would have said, nah, there's no way they would work again. But, uh, they work. <laughs> this one is an unusual one. Um, to me at least, because it's got an AMD Opteron in it. Not a processor I've ever heard of. I've heard of Sempron and whatnot, but not an Opteron. And it's spelled O-P-T-E-R-O-N. So if anybody knows anything about that, I'd be interested to know. Uh, one of these, this one, even though it's got PCIe video slots, it's actually got DDR400 DIMM slots on it. And I'm pretty certain that the other three are not only DDR2 RAM, but they've got the PCIe slots on as well. It's an AMD. Interesting to know what AMD is on that one. I think they're all AMD actually. That's an AMD socket. That's an AMD socket. Yeah. I might actually stick some of my AMD processors in there. If I can find any that will fit. Just to <laughs> just to keep the processors safe. I might actually do that with a lot of these boards. Put the processors in. One, it'll help protect the sockets. And two, it won't bend the bloody pins. Because the, the pins on the bottom of a processor bend so bloody easily. Um, I actually think they bend a lot more easily than the sockets which have the pins rather than the contact pads. Um, really I should have the guards in them but I haven't got guards for them unfortunately. Uh, I think one of my oldest boards is probably this one which I took out of a very old Windows XP machine. It was an e-machine so it was one of your sort of budget e-computers. Windows XP it had um, gaming things all advertised all over it. You know, apparently it was designed for gaming, but it's got um, so dim RAM slots on there. <laughs> you might just make out the two little notches in there. Not DDR, which I would expect most other Windows XPs would have had back then. But like I said, this would have been your complete budget build computer. Or budget OEM. Hang on. I mean, I've got way better Windows XP boards on here. These two are almost identical. Um, they're two different revisions, basically, of the same board. That's revision one, and that's revision two. Or version two, it's got on it. But the model, num model number, MS6787, is exactly the same on both boards. Um, and the only visual... Vi there. We might spit the word out. Visual difference I can see is that this one's got the green dim slots and that one's got black. Other than that... Other than that... There, 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 there. I'm having trouble spitting the words out a minute. Um, I've not seen anything... That is actually different, or been added, or taken away, or anything on these. All the components look exactly the same. No, I have just seen one. There's three capacitors here by the processor. There's only two 
there. So that's one change. I wonder if this one is able to take a faster processor. Hence the extra capacitor down here. That's just a I'll have to look up the versions and see what's what. But, uh, yeah, everything's so low, even the heat sink. There's exactly the same. Same chip there as well. Exactly the same. Everything is exactly the same. I've got, I think this one's an MSI, although I haven't actually uh, checked this one, but it's MSI colours. <laughs> you know, the brightly coloured dim slots and the brightly coloured pink motherboard. I've got a similar one over here which is an MSI. It does have MSI written on this one. Uh, even the layout of the board is similar. That one looks like they've done away with the floppy disk connector. It's not there. No. Actually, that might be the floppy disk connector. This has only got the one IDE connector. This has still got all three on this one. Floppy disk and the two. IDE channels and SATA and that one's got SATA as well that one's got the PCIe slot but I can't remember whether that RAM is DDR2 or DDR I think looking at those dims they're DDR it's actually hard to see at a glance because there's not a lot of distance between the uh... that's DDR2 I think that one is as well. So if you look at the notches on these, not a lot in the way of differences. There's another DDR. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty certain that is DDR on that one. But I will grab. It's one way I find out. I've got some DDR sticks here. If this DDR, cool. That's like rotten horse shit. DDR. Um, one gigabyte DDR. Why is that not in one of my Windows XPs? Right, well, that notch does not line up that way, and I don't think it's not ooh, line up that way around either. If it doesn't, then this is a DDR2 board. It is a DDR2 board. <laughs> what do you know? Yeah, huh. I didn't know that. It's going to be a low end board from the looks of it. As in, I don't think it's got much in the way of um, I.O. and whatnot. Like we've got two USB headers there in the front panel header and only two SATA connectors. As well as the IDE. So really you could put two hard drives on those and an IDE optical drive on that. Oh, well, I'm going to look this one up because I'm curious now. Well, most of these got the fans disconnected. I have no idea about that. Oh well, that's enough to talk about the motherboards. I'll test those later on. I'll make a little test rig up in the kitchen and have a look. So, I've got yet another new addition to the bike collection. I've actually brought this one up here to show you. I'm going to bring the other one up as well at some point. Um, I can't get to the other two because they're down at Mum's at the minute. But uh, this one I actually got yesterday. I went out for a, a walk. Which you're allowed to go for exercise. And I pick this one up along the way. Put the money through the letterbox and this was left outside for me. So no contact with the seller at all. Uh, and all it really needs, the brakes work fine. All it needs is the gears setting up. They're not, um, the rear ones are not shifting properly. They need some attention. Probably a bit of grease on the cable. I think some lubrication down those hours would fix that. The front ones are not set up properly so I've got to adjust those as well but other than that it rides beautifully. And I bought this originally because I wanted to put racing bars on. I've got a nice set of black alloy drop down bars but after riding this home I actually quite like it as it is so I think that's just going to start some black on there or something. Let's see if I can clean that off. But uh, I do like the colour. Got mudguards as well. 
good tyres. It's like a hybrid. You know, it's got the the road going tyres on and mud guards. Straight forks like you would get in a racer. Uh, it was that that made me actually want to put the drop bars on it originally, but I don't think I will now. It's actually quite light. It's got this funky looking bottle holder on, which is actually clamped on. Uh, but I can't get the clamp to undo it at the minute. Because it's a bit loose. <laughs> That's the only issue with that. Um, there's a click from that pedal as well, so that may want a bit of lubrication. But other than that, bottom bracket bearings are fine. The wheel bearings feel fine. I didn't feel any knocks or rattles. Although I did notice a rub on one of these mud guards. A very, very light one. But I can't remember which one. Quick release front wheel, quick release seat post. That is as low as that will go. I literally only need it down just a smidge. I can ride it as it is though, but just for a bit of comfort, I wouldn't mind that going down about another centimetre. But to do that, I'm going to have to shorten the seat pole because I've got a funny feeling this seat pole goes all the way down to that. And that's why that won't go down any further. So all I'll do is take that out, put the seat post in a bench clamp when I'm able to get back down to mum's and uh, just cut a little bit off the bottom that's all I've got a I've got a hacksaw in the shed at mum's so right and the last thing before I turn the camera off for the time being I've got this wiring sorted I had to move these yellow ones they were there to go across a joint there in the track but I realized they were in the wrong place so I had to desolder them and I had to repair that joint anyway because I melted the bloody plastic connector um, so I did all that and I put the wires further down so they're all connected and working and they go all the way up and into one of those project boxes I just bought some cheap electronic project boxes off eBay I just thought that would be a heck of a lot easier than you know trying to make one out of wood and a lot quicker and it's already got the mounting holes for a couple of screws, etc. So, <laughs> yeah, that's just a darn sight easier. I haven't got the indicator LEDs on them yet uh, because a VAT controller is a 15 volt supply and I don't want to blow the LEDs because I haven't got resistors uh, for a 15 volt supply. They only came with resistors for a 12 volt supply. So I've left those off for the time being, but I would like a little LED to come on when I turn the sidings on. And I will give you a little demonstration of that later as well when I've got these motherboards out of the way. So, for now, I'm going to disappear and play with that PC and I'll update you on that later. In fact, what I'll do, I'll play with the PC, I'll test what motherboards I can test drop this base down and then I can come back with an update. That sounds like a plan. Right, see you in a bit. Right, they're all working. So all I need to do now is put those up there. Out of the way, and then that's that cupboard sorted for the time being. Oh. I did have trouble getting these ones to work but that's because I wasn't using either correct RAM or correct no actually the processors were right it was the RAM that I was not using I wasn't using the correct RAM but they all do work uh, well, I've got a lot <laughs> right, I suppose I should start stacking the ones without um, I can't really get it all in shot, I don't think. I'll get this done. Oh, that's better. Get all these done and uh, I'll get this down. I'm going to have a play. Make sure all my wiring on that works as it should. I don't know if it's a good idea stacking these on my box of computer mice, but I do have three or four mice out of the box and around the flat, so it shouldn't be a problem. 
I'm hoping anyway. Okay, so that one's just gone for the trip. Put that one in there then. While well, I'm up in this cupboard, so that's another thing that a friend of mine bought me. He bought over that weeks ago. God. I don't think it locks down, but it adjusts. Don't know if I'll use that, but I will keep hold of it. Right, now it's the awkward buggers with all the um, heat sinks on, but I don't really want to take them off because it's all helping to protect the processor. Those ones without the heat sinks on, I've left the processors in the sockets these time, this time, because I actually got this one to work. It didn't at first, but I took the heat sink back off, took the processor out, gave the socket a blow to get rid of the any dust or anything that might have built up in there, because there's the, a lot of these without the processors in sat up there for ages, so I thought well, maybe a bit of dust has got in there so it's not you know, making a connection and it just so happens I was right, so this one worked I had to do that to uh, a couple of the motherboards that one's quite long so I'm going to stick it down here as well Ooh. I actually found out I've got other DDR2 boards that I didn't actually know I had that was a pleasant surprise as well. Problem is, when you have so much stuff hoarded like this, you tend to forget what you have and haven't got. This is the other uh, DDR2 motherboard I've got. And I've got a funny feeling this isn't MSI because it's the um, model number starts MS. Which is, oh, it is an MSI. Duh! Not written down there. Don't know what sort of use I could put this to. I don't know what process is on it. It's what the I.O. is like. There's uh, no graphics connector or serial port. It is just six USB ports. I've never seen a USB connector like that. You've got your PS2 connectors for the mouse and keyboard. Uh, Ethernet, two external SATA connectors, and yeah, probably a 7.1 surround sound. But uh, this works a treat. Yeah, DDR2 memory, PCI E video card slot. But it's only got two SATA connectors, it's still got the IDE connector as well, and only two USB headers, so it's quite minimalistic. Early Windows Vista board, maybe? Actually, look at this. I'm surprised the board works. I can see two bulging capacitors. Up here, so I'm probably going to need replacing it some. Oh, I remember what this one came out of. It did come out of a uh, Windows Vista computer, That's the other problem when you've got so many motherboards, you tend to forget where they come from as well. But that's okay then. Stack that one there. I'm not sure I'm going to get any boards in front of that. Well, yeah, it booted up fine. I don't know how well it would run, you know, built into a PC. I don't know how well that would run a a complete setup because of those caps, probably not very stable. And, uh, it does work at least. Am I going to get one more up there? Should be able to. Before I've got to start stacking them in front. If I've got one with a very thin hat, thin heat sink, I might be able to get one more up there. Yep, there we go. This is not the ideal way to store your motherboards. Um, oh, 
I had to throw one of the Dell motherboards out that I had. I actually had spare for the octuplet dimension down there because <laughs> I plugged it in, turned it on and the capacitor went pop. <clears throat> and I thought, well, I could replace the capacitor if I really, really wanted to. And I just thought, I can't be bothered. I just didn't see the point, so I just binned it. I mean, if I wanted to, I can salvage it from the bin. It's still easy enough to get to, but... There's no point, really. over there that I didn't bother testing. Well, the one I didn't bother testing because I know the condition of that one and the other one I can't because I haven't got the processor. I'm going to have to see if I can find one. At some point. I'm in no rush to find one right this minute. properly. And I think I'm going to have to move this bike as well before I drop the uh, table down. Otherwise I'm going to have a lot of space to move around. There we go. Now I can shut the cupboard door and not look at it for a long time. that ladder out of the way as well. Move that little jack out of the way too. You know, I really can't wait until lockdown is over and this poxy virus is gone so I can actually ride this one. I'm looking forward to it. It's got very nice trigger shifters on this as well. Now Shimano Tourney. Tourney? I think that's how you pronounce it. T-O-U-R-N-E-Y. Well, I suppose in the meantime, I've got something to clean up. I'm just going to need a good clean. Uh, da -da -da -da. I think that control is fine there for the minute. Let's just move this out of the way. Apparently it's new old stock and it actually does look new. Look at this. Probably made for the fast service and just kept in storage and uh, never used. I can't remember. Star oh, it's a, and a Horizon. Uh, I've got Star LED. Apparently it's got two LEDs in. One that actually faces outwards and the other one faces in towards a little reflector. I'll uh, find something to poke in the switch hole later and uh, see if we can... Get that to work. Well, actually, I know it works because he included a battery with it, which I didn't expect. Um, and when I opened the box, it was actually flashing at me. <laughs> I don't know how. Um, yeah, I don't know how that was flashing at me because you need to, you know, poke something down that hole. So, I don't know. All I know is it was flashing at me. Right, let's plug this in. Drop that catch. Grab the table before I drop this catch. And then just lower this to the floor. Nope. Legs are a bit too far inward, so. We'll drag that out of there like that. Oh, piss. I know what I forgot to grab. The locomotives. And guess where they are? Should have grabbed those before I put this down. Yo. It's alright. I know where they are. I know what box I want. box 
locomotives. Alright, now what I want to do is try and position you so you can actually see the trains moving and see me controlling the switches. So you can actually see how it all works. But I'm not sure this side's going to work. Actually, it's going to have to be the other side, I think. Somewhere there. How's that? Yeah, good. So these are all in the off position, up, like that is on. And eventually there will be LED lights in there so I can see when they're on and off. Right, guinea pig. Is the guinea pig working? Yes, good. Not in the right direction though. Now, I have got to squeeze past you because I need to check the points, make sure they're in the right position. This one isn't. I want it to go onto that one, so I need that one switched like that. Now, in theory, this train should actually now go, or the locomotive I should say. It's not a train. A train is when it's got all its coaches or wagons on the back. That's what makes the train. This is just a locomotive. So, if I actually run that around, it should get as far as the siding and stop. Now if I flick this switch, it moves. See? <laughs> and I can do that on all three of the sidings and actually this one. For some reason on this one, goes into there, that's not working. And I think my problem lays with this point here. This is a bit dodgy on its shifting. Um, so I may actually replace that one. I might go on eBay in a little while and see if I can find one. Right. You can actually control your trains like this as well. Or not. It doesn't want to go back the other way. Let's give it a little nudge. Hello. That might help. Bring it all the way back, shall we? You see, the reason I've done this is because if I had a train like this, I did it again, I called that train, didn't I, to look and move. Like that, sitting on the siding, and I go like. You know, I want to set this one off, it's perhaps got a cargo and I want to set it off. It's no good. For some reason, that one stopped me. See, that one's now moving as well. So what I do is, I click that off. Now it's just the one on the outside that's working. I decided to get stuck there because I've got power off. No, it's just... Ah! I don't know what's happened. It hasn't um, gone over with enough speed. So it's, uh, its wheels are not sitting on a contacted spot. Hang on. Yeah, it's making contact now. I can hear it humming. But uh, yeah, that's the whole idea with this. And it stops. <laughs> okay, so I've got one train trying to go one way. I don't think this likes two locomotives on the same track. I think I've got them hooked together. I have. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. Over we go. Oh. oh yeah, I got them hooked together pretty well. <laughs> right, that's my little great western. 
That's my jimmy. I don't want my jimmy going around the track at the minute. Actually, I will just give this one a little run. I can't. It'll end up in the siding, so I'll squeeze past you again. Just flip that point. Flip the siding off because we don't need it on. Of the nudge. That's the only little lemur that I have. I think the wheels might want space and there's a bit of a wobble on it. Or it could be the track, because it only seems to do it there. It seems to go do as it comes around that corner. I would go much faster than that because I'll fly off the corners. Ask me how I know. I just remembered I've got to put the uh, tow hook back on that one. Sounded a bit like a car when they make a different sound when you put them in reverse. This car, a weight, I'm not sure what locomotive that's fallen out of, but that's what that is, it's a little weight. And the rest of them are just steam locos. This is my favourite one. One of them anyway. And this one I've got a running issue with. It's running a bit slow. Let him run around the track, shall we? Cotton buds, need some cotton buds. I don't think dirty wheels are the problem, but giving them a clean won't hurt, will it? Now. Ooh, ooh, ow, ow. Ah. <laughs> that stings. That's um, surgical spirit and I've got a cut right on the end of my thumb. But these wheels are... There's not a lot of dirt coming off these wheels so that's not the issue. I'll let him go around once more and I'll stop him. Not a bad crawl. It's a bit jerky, but let's take him off and put this one on. That's full speed. I've got the doll, but I won't go around anymore. Do you see what I mean? I've got an issue with that one. I'll show you what I mean, because I'll grab one of the other ones. Exactly the same locomotive, it's just got a different colour body on it. Send this one around the track, I'm sure he works. It's a bit quicker. Not that much quicker though, I've got it on full speed. Let's try. Should we try this one? Should run right. And yes, this one is actually a different colour to that one, and it's very, very close. Um, at first glance, you can't see the difference. Well, I hope I'm 
around the track quite nicely. There is a kink there somewhere because I can see the locomotive kick from side to side. A nice red one. Actually, that used to have a green body on it, but I swapped it. around quite nicely. And I think, yeah that's my last one and the body fell off of this one. Oh. Oh, I do hate it that with these. No, the motor is on these. And yes, Different styles of locomotive do have different motors. So that's the common one for these little ones, although this little class six diesel has got one in it that looks more like a scale electric motor. I can actually show you that one because it does drop off that body. Stupid con rods are a pain in the ass on these. Right, let's hold it by that. There. That's got it. Does it work? Well, it does. No, it won't. It's that one I swapped the body on. If you look at this one, got that anniversary celebration on it, you know, 150 years I think, GWR 150, 1835 to 1985, whereas that one's just got the standard Great Western body on it, and my stepdad gave me another one of these with the Great Western body on it, so I swapped it, because my stepdad gave me this as a loose body, so I swapped them over, so I didn't have two exactly the same. But I can't remember what the red one was. That might be back on its original chassis, actually. Hornby, made in China. Why doesn't that surprise me? Oh yeah, I was going to show you the motor on this. There's the clips. It's meant to be four little clips, like that. If you can see it on the end. Sticking up, but uh, three of them are broken off. Yeah, look, it looks just like an ordinary scale electric motor, which apparently is why this flies around the track like a bat out of hell. This really is a fast little shunter. Is that the way it's got to go back on? Yeah. So it's actually relying just on a couple of like little spring bits either side <laughs> to hold it on, a bit like friction fit. Alright, there we go. Seems to be common for these little locos to lose the rear um, clip. It looks like they just clip on to the back anyway, so I might have to find some up because I've got that one missing. That's missing one. I do hope that's a weight rolling around in there. Can I get that? Yeah. The weight's come out of the nose, that's all. That's where the weight is meant to be. It's meant to be glued in there. Well, I presume it's meant to be glued in there. So let's do that. Yeah, that one's actually missing two. That's missing one. That's it. I've just got them two that uh, are running slow for some odd reason. There we go. Those clips back on. Make sure my con rods are in. Yep. So. It's not very good for towing without the hook on. Because the hook one side is not very good. They tend to bounce off and then you lose your load. Which is not very helpful. Set the others around the track. Shall I send the jinty round as well? I sold my other jinty. Okay, that's making sparks when I do that, so let's just shut the power off. I'm 
so there is actually a switch on that controller so I can turn power off. Right, I'm going to put these two together because they've got the running problem. That means it's hook button back on. So it's got the little lemur knuckle hook on the front, but someone had uh, already changed the rear to a Hornby style coupler. That's the word coupler, not bloody hook. I'm going to have people shouting at me now in the comments, aren't I? You call it a hook, it's a coupler, you idiot. going to be able to reach that so I'm going to have to go around and get him. <laughs> Find out why he has uh, suddenly stopped. This one has often given me some problems though. Oh I see why. <laughs> it's picked up a lot of um, steel wool filings. So that's going to need a good clean out because it's stuck all around the wheel and it's obviously just caused a short. I don't know if you can see that. It's all around that wheel. It's a bit of it right there. Well, I might have to just take a brush up that end later and just sweep that track. It's weird how the other one's gone round fine but this one hits it and gets all bummed up. Almost like these wheels are magnetic and it's just stuck to the wheels. I'm not quite sure I'm going to get all of that off of them. I'm using a cotton bud at the minute, but. Bastard. This is a bastard for the wheels to get dirty as well. I think I might have to have his, uh, his body off to. Probably get them filings out of there. Yeah, we'll do that later. Right. So, I don't know what to wire up next. Point motors, get some of them done. I have to order some more of these because I, I drilled the holes for the LED in the other lid because I bought two of these and Everything was just all over the place, it wasn't straight, so I just took a lid off the other one and just drilled four holes for now. I think some of them are a little bit off. But uh, to be honest, they're not really noticeable. So I'm a lot happier with that one than I was the other one. That was shit, basically, so I'm glad I actually bought two. So... That's a project box for something else. Yeah, all of these no work. Oh, those yellow wires are now connected across here on this point. So between there and there. So this whole section can be made dead rather than just this, because I did have it here. Which meant when I switched it, it would just switch this section on and off. I thought that's not what I want, so I'm sort of glad I've messed up the joint there because it meant I could put that problem right. Well, either way, I had to take that joint apart because I put it in the wrong place. So, but, uh, yeah, like I said, for some reason that that section is not livening up, and I don't know why. Well, if I was running DCC, I wouldn't have all this problem. <laughs> what I would have to do is run what they call a bus wire around underneath here and have wires drop down in solid um, intervals along the track and what my stepdad usually does, he does it at every join so he solders the joins together, the track and then solders wires to that and drop them through the table and connect them up to the bus wires um, I think that is just to keep a good steady voltage all around because I don't actually know how DCC works. I'd love to find out how it works, whether it actually, you know, uses, I um, can't think of what it's called, like the uh, wavelengths through the track or if it's like 
radio control and that sends a signal to the chip on the locomotive. I'd, I'd love to know how it works. <laughs> right. Anywho, we'll put this back on. The only reason it's that low is because I've left the lid off and it's evaporated. <laughs> Don't leave the lids off. Right, well that's what I was going to do just before I disappear. Hopefully this will do it. That's the um, selection between flash or steady burn. That one should be on and off if I can get the thing through now. Steady burn. Or flash. Which seems to be the... Uh, or a common thing with modern lamps like this to have that option. Although you really see a lot of lamps here in Britain anymore. I think the roadworks and whatnot, roadworks companies just got fed up with people nicking them. I don't know why people have got to nick them. You can buy the bloody things brand new online. Some companies want you to bulk buy though, but you do get companies that are selling their surplus stock. You know, companies that have gone under maybe, or they just don't have a use for them anymore. So you can buy things like this on eBay every day. There's loads on there. You can get old vintage ones, or you can get modern ones like this one. It's actually quite a nice lamp. I just bought it because it's different, you know. I know some people are going to say, you can't be buying things minute but it's keeping people in a job isn't it while they're uh, still allowing them to deliver these carriers have got to you know employ their staff so anywho <coughs> squeaky tripod I'm gonna say thanks a lot for watching I hope you enjoyed this video something a bit different I think Trying to do different, I'm trying to do a bit more regular videos as I have nothing else to do at the minute. Which is uh, driving me absolutely bonkers. See, at the moment, I probably go out to the shops at least once every day, but I count that as my exercise as well. Which means I don't go out twice a day, I still only go out the once. As Boris said, we can exercise once a day, but I thought, well... Why go out twice when I've got to cycle to the shops? That might as well double up as my exercise. So, so I had to go to uh, what we nicknamed Grumpy's. I have no idea where it got that nickname from. It's actually known as Haysborough Road Stores because it's up on Haysborough Road, just up the road there. To get a couple of um, two litre bottles of Pepsi Max Cherry. Because uh, I haven't seen it anywhere else. And Sainsbury's, last time I went there, they still haven't recovered from all the panic buying. There's still a lot of empty shelves and things, including the uh, drink aisle when I was last in there. So at the moment, the shop up the road there is the only place I can get it from. But uh, I've got one full bottle and a bit in the fridge and one on the worktop, so I should be good for a bit. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'll stop rambling and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.